You've been listening to an Occupy Chicago update. We now return you to the 99%. Mic check. I okay, said, we are Mike back. Check. We're back here with more live from the Heartland on Michael, WLUW Michael. 88.7. When I say mic check, you're supposed to answer mic, mic check. check. Okay. Oh, a story from this week when uh, the seniors and folks who are supporting the men- the uh, who are against closing of the mental health facilities all over the Chicago, which is proposed and actually just passed. Uh, they were sitting out in, in front of the fifth floor offices of the mayor. They were wonderful and en- energetic and there for hours. And at some point, the police needed to make an announcement about what was going to happen next, and there was a lot of noise. And didn't they say, Mike check. Mike. <laughs> Cops did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mike check. <laughs> Which got everybody's attention. Aaron Hughes, welcome back to Live from the Heartland. Oh, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on. It's uh, it's our honor to have you. Um, Aaron is an active member of the Iraq Veterans Against the War. That's still true. That is still true. How long ago did you and I first meet on the show? When it was, I was just the old, the sole host that day. It, it, it was about a year and a half ago. I wow. Think. How have you been? Uh, I've been surviving. Been God surviving. Love you. Working hard. Yeah, and you I gotta know work hard to survive these days. That's yeah, right. really. Talk about an ingenuity and people working hard to get ahead. The Republicans should love us. <laughs> yeah, really. Exactly. When they when they castigate the uh, folks at Occupy, when they say "Go get a job," you want to say first of all, uh, "Duh," <laughs> and then they also want to say, you know, these guys are holding up more than their share by being out there every day. We should have all been out there every day for the last ten years. Years, basically through the wars and everything. Aaron, what are you up to? Tell us, uh, inform the people what they should know. What they should know. Well, um, Iraq Veterans Against the War. Um, we're working on specifically a, a new campaign that we launched, launched last year, which is called Operation Recovery, and it's a campaign for service members' right to heal. Um, currently, there's a suicide epidemic amongst active duty service members. Uh, it has increased 150 percent over the last 10 years, and um, there's a sexual assault um, epidemic going on. A one, third, one third of the women serving in the military are, are dealing with sexual assault and uh, by their peers and um, or by their Ooh. command. And uh, 48% of the individuals that report issues of sexual assaults are males. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that doesn't even get into the number of service members that are being redeployed that are diagnosed with traumatic brain injury or post-traumatic stress. And so we're, we're fighting to actually hold the military up to its own standards. And in doing so, we'll draw up to 50% of the fighting force from the fight. Because 50% of the fighting force has already been diagnosed with military sexual trauma, traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress. And that's all within the military, which uh, I think is uh, a staggering thing when people step back and think about it, and the fact that these wars are financed on the idea of support the troops. Yes. And yet the troops are crushed and wow. destroyed by this and then you that's not even looking at the veteran you know the veteran situation that I think uh, Occupy is doing you know a great job to highlight the fact that the unemployment rate amongst veterans it's uh, it's uh, 12% overall uh, which is three times three percent three percentage points higher than the national average but then amongst my generation of veterans between the ages of 18 and 24 it's 21.9 percent which is just staggering when you consider consider the realities and uh, you know that doesn't even get into the fact that the VA isn't really set up to handle the number of service members coming back, and especially it's not set up to handle the particular uh, injuries the, that and, they're. And w- it's not set up to take care of the women service members that have served this country over the last uh-huh. 10 years. Uh-huh. And so, uh, you know, th- that's where our fight comes in, and our, our, our um, and our relationship to the Occupy movement is really clear. It's like we are the 99% and the 1%. The 1% are individuals that have profited during a time of war. And I don't know if there's anything else to call those people but war profiteers. Yep. So there, one of the key things to take from this, and people should get this, is there's great disparity between the rhetoric of support our troops and the actual uh, mechanisms to support them in their time of need when they come back. That's right. And, uh, you know, like I said, every bill, every dollar, the, the defense, Department of Defense uh, budget has increased over the last three years. Um, it is the highest it has ever been. And that's all done on the backs of support the troops. And right now, they are 
not supporting if the you're, troop. If you have a mental injury from your deployment, you are getting a, a bad discharge because you can't perform your duties. And that, that's what's happening on a regular basis. And uh, that's why you know we're targeting Fort Hood, uh, General Campbell. It's the largest military installation in the United States. And we want him to defend service members right to heal. So You're saying right to heal. People might not actually hear that whole title. But it's uh, right to heal is the is the name of the uh, the program that you're pushing right now. Yeah, um, you know, in uh, Martin Luther King's Beyond Vietnam speech, he spoke mm -hmm. of uh, healing our society, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, you know our service members and veterans who write to heal. It's just one aspect of healing our entire society from these three major tenets that allow us to get into these wars, which are militarism, uh, racism, and the way we dehumanize, the, and, and materialism. I mean, right. we, we prioritize those things over human needs and human values, and, and, and changing those values is about healing our society and about healing our relationships with the Iraqis and Afghans. What are, uh, so what's going on here in the neighborhood? tonight that you want to let people know about? Yeah, so uh, Iraq Veterans Against the Wars had a year-long project with Just Seeds, which is an amazing artist organization. You're um, saying Just Seeds. I keep saying this because you're a little far from the microphone uh, and people might not actually make out what you're saying. Yeah, sorry. I, That's um, okay. Just Seeds as in semillas. Yeah. and uh, Solo semillas. Um, <laughs> we did a portfolio collaboration um, to highlight uh, the traumas of war and uh, the individuals that have stood up and fought against those things war resistors and um, the portfolio releases tonight at mess hall which is just down the road from here right our neighbors right just seeds iraq veterans against the war print portfolio war is trauma that's tonight from 6 p.m to 9 p.m 6, 6 p.m to 8 p.m at the mess hall uh, which is 69 32 north glenwood avenue um aaron hughes let me ask you uh you know uh we, we like to bring up the old days up here because uh, some of the things more that we... You than me. Well, I'm older than you. Some of the things yeah, that we that. battled then are still in the mix today. And I'm, I'm wondering what kind of inspiration that the Iraq uh, Veterans Against the War got from the Vietnam Veterans Against the War. And is there any collaboration? Is there uh, people from uh, that organization from back in that day uh, sharing with you fellows and you gals today? We're continuously collaborating with Vietnam Veterans Against the War, and we're standing on the sh shoulders of giants. I mean, what they were able to accomplish um, during the Vietnam War and in order to bring an end to that war. And I, I hope that we can aspire to be that type of organization and end the wars in, in Iraq and end the war in Afghanistan. I know we, you know, Obama's talked about withdrawing troops from Iraq, but really, you know, we're just placing those troops on the Kuwait-Iraq border, and those troops aren't going to be home for Christmas. And I know some of them that are getting deployed and it's, it's time that we actually bring our service members and veterans home so that they can heal and so the Iraqis and Afghans can heal. Well, yeah, Aaron, um, oh, I, had a, I had one more speechless. question, Aaron, before we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> You know, not, back not back in the Vietnam War, we uh, we had uh, there was conscription. A lot of people were drafted, and we had a, a lot of people in the military who became very hostile to the war. And I'm wondering what the situation is today, where people volunteer to become part of the military. Uh, do you still have high levels of resistance uh, within the troops uh, out in the field? Is that going on, or are people gung ho? Soldiers are not gung ho. But that doesn't mean that they're at a place where they can resist. Most soldiers are, like I said, most soldiers are going on their third deployment. Most of them have families now. It's, it's a whole different situation. The reason why people stay involved in the military is because they get health insurance, because they don't have an economic choice. Right. And a lot of service members are staying in because they, they, they're threatened with the fact that, oh, you're going to get out of the military? Well, look at the unemployment rate for veterans, even though soldier, you know, recruits are told, well, you join the military so you can get ahead in life. The reality is, well, getting ahead means your unemployment, your homelessness, your suicide, all these rates increase. Um, and and the reality is that, that that the military itself is breaking down and the number of service members dealing with these traumas but they don't have a, a way to fight and that's what we're working with them to do is here's a platform here's a way to fight here's a way for fight for, for your rights and by doing so you're fighting for your entire country and for the rights of the Iraqis and Afghans. Aaron Hughes how can people contact you and the organization Iraq Veterans Against the War? 
Yeah, go to our website, IVAW.org, and um, sign our pledge for Operation Recovery. Help us fight for service members right to heal. And we hope you'll come back with your art and war events that you used to have at the Heartland. We were talking about it earlier. You guys were great. We'd love to have you back. Oh, we'd be humbled to have right, come back. Thank you. Aaron Hughes, God okay, bless you. Thank right you for over. your service. We're going to bring on another...